certainly taxi accidents are a problem. But if, if you go around and, and look at where are the major injuries coming from that we see, taxis are not the biggest problem. The, 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 the one guy with a taxi accident, uh, the taxi we was in actually left the Mount Croix off ramp and fell down. So it's a very unusual accident. <laughs> they were speeding on the corner, lost control, went through the barrier and dropped off the edge of the, of the off, off ramp, three or four stories. And he was wearing his seatbelt. So there's a sense in which he was doing all the right stuff. Yeah. And he still got injured. The, 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 the other guy was in a taxi who was hit by a Mercedes, who was hit by a Bucky. So the taxi didn't cause the accident. Yeah. Um, what was interesting in the first guy is that he was almost the only occupant of that taxi that survived. The eight sure. other occupants were killed. He was in, his, in the front of the taxi yeah. with his seatbelt on and he survived with a major injury. Sure. Um, and often those guys who are injured in taxis, the, the, it, it, there, is, there are problems with overloading. Mm -hmm. the, the structural integrity of the taxis is not always great. The, the, they aren't seat belted in. Yeah. So, so the taxi may not have caused the accident. The, 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 there's often the perception that the taxi driver is the, is the, the dangerous factor, but you know, there's more to it than that. If we're going to look at the, the other guys who got here injured uh, at the moment, there's, there's a large group of them who are traveling on the back of buckies. If you roll in a bucky and you're in the back, that's it. That's, you're a projectile. And, and you will get severely injured. And, and then the, 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 the other group are those people who, who were in private cars that were just simply traveling too fast. All of these people had different vehicles that they were traveling in. Uh, the, the speed is a common factor, the lack of seatbelts is a common factor, the, 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 uh, the, the point at which you become a projectile. You just, the, the car leaves the road, it rolls, you have nothing keeping you safe inside that cocoon, or there isn't a cocoon. Yeah. And, and, and then the, the, the severe injury is inevitable, and we've got to get that message across. You know, it's very simple. If people do start wearing seatbelts, they might still get injured, but they're not going to be one of the eight who died. They're going to be the, the one who survived. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously alcohol comes in there. I mean, it's, it's a, a huge factor. Um, a lot of our, our trauma in South Africa is, all, is, 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 is alcohol related and we drink too much on the roads as a, as a nation. We, we, we're terrible at it. Uh, our parliamentarians do it, our rock stars do it, our soccer stars do it. We, we don't know the extent of severe injury in South Africa. We don't keep stats. Um, a couple of us looked uh, um, about 10 years ago at the incidence of spinal cord injury in South Africa and the state doesn't keep those stats. The public hospitals don't keep those stats. The road accident fund doesn't keep those stats. Uh, in South Africa we are not seeing the people surviving. Um, we are probably a little bit better in the private sector than in the public sector but neither the private nor the public private nor the public sector is really that good um, as we should be and certainly in the public sector across the country we're seeing people not making it to the hospital from the, from, from the roadside because there was too much of a delay because the ambulances weren't kitted out properly because roadside care wasn't done properly uh, they're not being managed properly in, in, our, in, in many of our casualties obviously they're centers of great excellence if you go and look at um, Hütteskir and Joburg Gen and Barra, you're getting just unbelievable world-class acute uh, emergency room care. Um, but if you, if you have your accident in the western half of the Eastern Cape, if you have it deep in Mpumalanga or the northern province, your chances of getting the immediate care that you need are, are slim. So you're probably not making it into the, those first days through the hospital. And then, in many hospitals, there's good ICU care. But once you get into the general wards, we, we just don't have enough nurses to look, look after critically injured, uh, catastrophically injured patients.
when you are paralyzed, you are unconscious. And so many people, those who've made it to the hospital, and some have died already, those who've made it through the first days of operation and, and critical care, uh, and those who haven't died, they die in the wards, or they're discharged from hospital with complications back into their communities with no support, and they die. So you've got to be a really tough person to make it. Um, Ari Sellis, the, the chairman of the Quad Para Association, uh, once said that mm. South Africa is a hard place, a tough place to be a quadriplegic. If you look for accessible buses in Port Elizabeth today, there are a few, but they're not on the main routes. They're not on all the routes. Um, so people with spinal cord injuries just don't get the, the, the community access that they need. Uh, we don't fund caregivers. Uh, the road accident fund does it, the compensation fund does, medical aids don't. If you're a public service sector patient, you, 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 you're surviving on a disability grant of about 1,300 rand a month, and no one can, can afford your, your, your care on that.